it takes a minute or two to sort out, though it does say it is live on Facebook. So maybe we already are live. And if that is the case, good morning, one and all. Yes, I think we are live. So good morning, everyone. Good morning to those on Zoom. It's been lovely to have a little conversation with folks beforehand. Good morning to anyone looking on on live stream and to anyone who may be looking on a little bit later via the YouTube channel. I hope this is finding you well and that you're coping with all the um, restrictions that we find ourselves under at this time. Um, simply, it's great to be able to meet together, to worship together, however we are able to this morning. It's, it's just so wonderful to be with you. We are going to begin by uh, singing a hymn together, a song together, one which is well known. Uh, shout to the Lord. Uh, you can sing your hearts out. Uh, you're all muted. At least I think everyone on Zoom is muted, par that one or two. So you can sing loud. Uh, just need to share the screen as we begin our worship uh, by singing Shout to the Lord.
And with that as our opening, so we turn to some liturgy. However we are able to meet this morning, we acknowledge that we meet in the name of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, God is one. And so we are able to pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we gather, we say sorry to God for those things that we know that we have done wrong, aware that Christ forgives. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. In, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do, ju do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Sarah is going to read our Bible reading to us. Sarah, can we hear you? Right, I've unmuted. So. Brilliant. We can hear you. Good. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to you. Sally is going to bring something of that passage to us this morning. Sally, over to you. Thank you. Uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A long time ago, in the early 1980s, I and my family were living in Jevington, just outside Polgate. One morning, as I was driving home, having taken the children to school, I heard, inside my head, a voice saying, I want you to tell the world about me. I had no doubt it was the Lord speaking. I was so startled, I nearly drove into the ditch. But the call was so strong and so persistent that I had to do something about it. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole story because we'd be here till Christmas 2025. But the upshot of it was that I was eventually ordained a priest in the Church of England. 
Now, I mention this simply because today's gospel story is about Jesus calling two of his disciples, Philip and Nathaniel. And the story of their call seems quite sparse, really, although there is, of course, some important theology in there, too. However, just as my own call to ministry involved a lot more than that initial command, I suspect that the call to Philip and Nathaniel, and indeed all the disciples, involved a lot more too. What else could have happened? Well, the context of their call is important. St John tells us that on the previous day, two of John the Baptist's disciples had followed Jesus when they heard John saying that Jesus is the Lamb of God. They wanted to know more, and Jesus, seeing them following, invited them to come with him. One of those disciples was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. The other is not named, but maybe that was Philip, because the next day Jesus looks up Philip and says, come on, follow me. Or maybe he said something along the lines of, you came and listened to me yesterday. I saw your interest and I see your potential. So come on, follow me. And clearly, Philip is keen to do so. But the first thing he does is to become an evangelist. He looks for his friend Nathaniel and tells him that we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathaniel is sceptical. He clearly doesn't think much of Nazareth. Philip doesn't argue, though. He just says, come and see, and Nathaniel does. He must have been intrigued by Philip's enthusiasm. And then, of course, he was astonished by Jesus's words about him, Nathaniel, under the fig tree. Now, I mentioned important theology. Well, I've identified two points. No doubt there are more, but that's what I've come up with. The first is that mention of the fig tree. What's that about? You know, I think Jesus is making reference to the prophet Micah. Micah was a prophet during the reigns of kings Jothan, Ahaz and Hezekiah. That spanned approximately 63 years. Micah was protesting against the corruptions and pretensions, particularly among the leaders, secular and religious, although they blended really, all of this pretension in the land of Judah. He calls for pure worship of the Lord and for social justice, because both were in short supply. He was a contemporary of Isaiah and shares Isaiah's word of judgment against God's own people. He says that God will bring true justice and the time will come when every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree and no one will make them afraid. You see, in Micah's time, and also in Jesus's time, people were not able to do that much because the majority was so poor, they had to work all hours. Life was precarious, and they didn't have time for leisure and taking rest under a fig tree, even to pray. And that, anyway, would not go down well with any masters. So in mentioning the fig tree, Jesus is saying that through him, God's rule is coming, and once again, people will have the freedom to worship without fear and live in security and peace. The second piece of theology is when Jesus speaks about the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, I'm sure you've guessed that this echoes the story of Jacob, who'd had to leave his home in a hurry because he'd stolen his brother Esau's birthright. Alone, and probably afraid, cold and hungry, he fell asleep and dreamed of a ladder reaching from heaven to where he lay and God's angels were going up and down it. Then the Lord came and stood beside him and promised him that he would eventually return to his homeland in peace and prosperity. When Jacob woke up, he realised that although he had felt utterly alone, in fact God was with him. He named that place Bethel, which means God's house. 
and many generations later, his descendants made Bethel one of the places of early Christ Israelite worship. They believed that God's house was where God is really present. And we sort of echo that today by having dedicated places of worship, although we do so because Jesus told us that by having told us that where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. But anyway, going back to Nathaniel, when Jesus says, you shall see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, what is he, he is intending Nathaniel, Philip and the others around him and us to understand are two things. First, God is always with us regardless of our circumstances. And he knows us, even though we don't realize this and can't see him. And he calls us to his service, not because we deserve it, but because he loves us and sees the potential in us. And second, Jesus is saying, and here I'm going to quote from a theologian named Tom Wright. He says, Jesus is saying, don't think all you will see is one or two remarkable acts of insight, such as I showed you that I knew you before you even appeared. What you'll see from now on is the reality towards which Jacob's ladder and even the Jerusalem temple are pointing to. If you follow me, you'll be watching what it looks like when heaven and earth are open to each other. So in other words, the disciples and all Jesus's faithful followers will see and experience wonderful things. So it seems to me in this story of the call of Philip and Nathaniel, we learn first that God's kingdom is where peace, justice, mercy and compassion reign. This is a theme that we see throughout the Bible in both the Old and the New Testaments. Throughout the Old Testament, all the prophets demand that God's people must live in accordance with his law, which means that they are to practice justice, mercy, generosity, and compassion. They must not seek self-serving power, but must care for one another and ensure that fairness and kindness prevails. If they do this, they will live in peace. The other nations will have respect for them and not harm them. There will be no war or fear of war, and the earth will be fruitful. All this will be reality if people live in accordance with God's laws. In the New Testament, in the Gospels, Jesus is constantly rebuking those who put their version of the law above the need for compassion, justice and mercy. He is clearly appalled by the hypocrisy that demands, for example, that people must worship regularly and make offerings of tithes but ignores the rampant poverty and injustice that prevents them from doing so. In their letters to the new Christian congregation, since Paul, Peter and James also urge the believers to provide for those who are in need with generosity and to follow Jesus's example of loving care for one another. And second, God is always with us. He knows exactly who and what we are, including all our faults and failings, our hopes and fears and our regrets. Yet nevertheless, he sees our potential and calls us into his service. That service can take many forms and may lead us in unexpected directions. Of course, there will be times of doubt and uncertainty, but he gives us the strength, courage and faith to trust and follow him. So we are to be evangelists. Like Philip, we are to share the good news as often and as best we can. In the face of Nathaniel's scepticism, Philip doesn't argue but simply says, come and see. It was his actions, his enthusiasm that got Nathan to get up and see. Philip Nathaniel and all the disciples chose to respond to Jesus's call to follow me. The way wasn't easy and no doubt they had their fair share of doubts, setbacks and challenges along the way, but they answered the call and stayed faithful. My own call was totally unexpected. 
I did not feel I had in any way earned it. But by following it up, I discovered that God knew me, what I was at that time, and knew what I could become. So be aware and take heart. Listen to the Lord's voice. Let him lead you. Don't think to yourself, I'm not good enough. Let him be the judge of that. Remember, he looks beyond the surface and deep into our hearts. And before long, we too will see and experience wonderful things. Amen. Thank you, Sally. Thank you for that and the, that promise of the, um, God helping us to find our potential in him. That's a, a wonderful thought, especially at this time. We turn to our liturgy to proclaim together what we believe. And so let us proclaim together that we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us turn to a time of intercessory prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Heavenly Father, thank you that you invite us into a friendship with you, that you want us to meet our full potential in you, and you invite us to share that friendship with others too. For a moment, we remember the names of those we would love to come to know of that friendship with Jesus they can have for themselves. We pray that our church will have the same hunger to share this friendship with Jesus as Philip did, and to be as open to respond as Nathaniel. And we ask this for the wider church too, so we pray for Martin, Will and Ruth, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom for our national leaders as they continue to make big decisions that affect each one of us. We pray for those who are vulnerable within society. 
the homeless, those without employment, those who are hungry without enough food. We pray too for a peaceful transmission of power in America and that that, that country may work towards unity over the coming months. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen and give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the safe arrival of baby Edison, father to Maisie and son to Elizabeth and Mark. We ask for energy and tenacity as we face the coming weeks of lockdown. We pray for those who feel alone and afraid at this time. We pray for opportunities to reach out to those who are struggling with global events, yet we also give thanks for those who are working out the logistics of mass vaccination programmes and for all who will administer them. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the healing and wholeness of all who long to be well in body, mind and spirit, for those affected directly or indirectly because of the pandemic. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Again, in a moment of silence, remember those who we know before God who loves us. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We remember this morning Lisa who has sadly died because of the pandemic. We pray for those who mourn her loss. We pray for peace. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Let me first introduce that with a, a verse from the Bible before we open up the Zoom channel to share a sign of peace with one another. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. You may just have to unmute yourself for a moment to be able to do that. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace to anyone looking on via Facebook page, via live stream. Peace very much be with you this morning. So we come to share bread and wine together, albeit in a very distant form. Able to acknowledge again that the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. 
when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all a perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and of this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal Son of Heaven, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So however you are able this morning, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Let us say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights, Give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to turn to song again, and we are going to sing the song, Will You Come and Follow Me? 
just need to get this ready. Okay, let's see. come to the end of our service this morning and we end with a prayer of blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. That does bring our service of communion this morning to a close. We do need to say farewell to those looking on on live stream as we end and those who may be looking on on YouTube. Uh, a gentle reminder that our midweek communion will be at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. And again, of course, we, we gather as we are able to in this way next Sunday morning at 10.30. But we say farewell to those who may be looking on from a distance. We'll keep the Zoom channels open so we can uh, keep on talking. But farewell to anyone looking on at this morning.